If your computer device or laptop or smartphone or tablet isn't turning on or turns on but switches off after a few seconds or there's no display despite it turning on like with LED lights or fan spinning, in this troubleshoot series which is an 11 part I'm teaching you how to troubleshoot and fix your device at home super easy. Coming up, roll the intro. <laughs> Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Hilmai Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing entrepreneur tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video, but I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. So I've got a script with me which I'm going to refer to. I'm not just going to look into it and read off. So I hope you don't get annoyed by it. It's going to speed up the process of this whole video. So this is the continuation of the troubleshoot series that I started. But for you to understand this and the next nine videos, you will need to watch the first one in the series, the introduction. I mentioned 10 common parts of any computer device which can go wrong. And we will go into that order already laid out there. That video also contains an explanation of how a computer works once you turn it on and understanding the sequence will help you troubleshoot and fix any of the problems a lot more easily. Unless you already know all that information, you should go back there, watch it and then come back here. Without that video, some of you might think these troubleshoot tips are far too basic and you might be right, but I do explain the reason for that order that I chose and also the level of troubleshooting we're doing. All right, uh, usual disclaimer for any tech repair, this does come at some risks of electrocuting yourself or damaging your components. So you should consult a professional if you're in doubt, otherwise do at your own risk. Okay, even if you're not tech savvy, the following first tips can be done by anyone even before you contact any tech expert. And usually you get this advice from tech support on the phone. I'm pretty sure you have experience with this, all right? Even if you don't know the 10 parts that I mentioned in the last video, or you don't know the sequence of the boot up process, you should be able to do the following tips. The first one being the legendary switch off, unplug, and then wait for a few seconds and turn it back on. Now this per se is not really a fix, but it works in mysterious ways and no one really knows why. At least I don't know. On your computer case, there's also a reset button usually and you can press that, it will reset your system. Sometimes it might work. There's one last thing you could do, which is called a hard reset, or you could discharge all the static electricity which was built up in your computer. And the way to do this is to switch off the device from the back and you unplug the power cable and unplug as many devices as possible. And then you are going to press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. 30 seconds is much better. This does work in terms of hard resetting the whole system if your problem isn't kind of power related. Okay, so these first general troubleshooting tips is like shooting blind and hoping you hit your target. Hey, if it works, don't question it. However, if you want to be more precise and you want to find out exactly what's causing your issue, stay tuned. So the first part that I mentioned was the actual case itself. And yes, the outer enclosure can cause problems in two main scenarios. So number one, the case can cause your computer not turning on at all. And number two, the case could cause your computer to be stuck in a boot loop, which means that it would try to turn on and then switches off. You'll see some signs of life like fan spinning, LED, etc. but it will turn off and maybe stuck in a restart loop continuously. So we're gonna deal with both of these cases. Now this is troubleshooting 101. Many, many problems can be diagnosed by simply accessing inside of a device. So if you open it and have a look, there usually are a lot you can tell just by having a visual inspection. The irony is that for many devices, especially the more recent ones, they are designed in a way to prevent or discourage end users to open them and access them easily under the guise of safety. And same goes for us technicians as well. Don't assume because we deal with these things day in day out that we can actually open anything within a few seconds. Sometimes we come up with a new design which is so complex and which is really perplexed. Not only opening it is a problem, once you try to figure out how to open it, 
you will come up with some weird screws, which again, the manufacturers keep, com keep coming up with these weird shaped screws that you're like torque screws, uh, star screws, or uh, triangle screws, or the list goes on. And uh, one of the main problems that you're gonna face, even if you figure out how to actually open the damn thing, you will not have the tool or the right screwdriver to be able to open it, and that will discourage you. In my experience, sometimes it takes me and some other technicians up to 90% of the troubleshoot steps just to figure out how to open and access the inside. Once you're inside, it's a lot easier in many cases, very easily fixed. Okay, so there isn't one complete set of screwdrivers you could buy to cater for all types of jobs, but there are usually some sets which have more than one type of tools. I've bought a few, maybe about three sets, and uh, I've actually bought a few from China, and if you are willing to wait a bit, you will get them for much, much cheaper. What I do recommend that is you buy the tool you need for the job you need. Don't try to buy in anticipation of what you may need in the future, because these, like I said, these things keep changing all the time. If you do buy from China, from eBay, uh, be careful. And also, if you're gonna buy low cost ones, do expect them not to last very long. But it might do the job if you're just trying to fix your problem and you're not gonna be doing this for a long run. In my opinion though, it is worth having a few of these uh, screwdriver sets or you know, generally computer repair or phone repair sets that do come in handy. Check the link below for some of these uh, affiliate links. The other thing is yesterday, I just released a standalone video of how to take a motherboard out of a case. That includes some precautionary steps you should take before you work on any electronic device and also includes some tips of how to open the side panel and access the inside. So go and watch that if you don't know how to do these things yet. Check the link above or description below. So now that you know how to work safely, uh, once you open the case, a physical inspection will tell you a lot. Many people, they will actually look for things like loose cables, right? Just have a quick check and have a quick tug and then just plug things back if you think they're loose. Or you could even just unplug things and put them back. That seems to work sometimes, right? Some people will, you know, uh, take off the RAM by opening these tabs and uh, they, call, they do what's called reseating. So, you know, you take the RAM sticks out and reseat them, or you could even try different slots. Um, so you could do a few of these kind of general troubleshooting. Again, that would be like shooting blind. So you don't know what you're looking for, but you know, sometimes it might work to fix your problem. So it's worth having a go. All right, so we mentioned two main scenarios why your case could cause your computer not to turn on or turning on, but stuck in a boot loop. Now, the first scenario is to do with power, but not with the power supply per se. And that scenario means that you're getting power into the uh, power supply and into the motherboard. And you can often see evidence of this. Like in this motherboard, there is an LED light that if there is power, and you should be able to see some lights. Okay, so that indicates that power is coming in. However, when you're pressing the front button, nothing's happening. The computer doesn't turn on. So what it means is like all the power is coming through the back, but there is a connection from the front panel which connects to two pins on the motherboard and that activates the whole computer. So in a case like this, here's the main switch, the front one. So if you press it, it looks a bit similar to this and uh, there's a switch here which is hiding behind the button on the front panel and when you press it on the other end it's connected by two um, terminals right and these two terminals they connect to two pins on the motherboard for the power so when you're pressing it it closes the circuit and tells the computer there's a closed circuit so power gets through and then the computer should turn on now, just based on the front bit, on the front panel button, there are four possible situations why your computer might not be turning on. So number one, this button here, the power button, could actually be broken or stuck. In fact, this one is actually a little bit stuck. When I'm pressing, I can feel a bit of resistance, right? So that could just indicate that this power bit, this button is not working properly. Number two, you're gonna have this cable, which is connecting to the motherboard, and anywhere between the first end and the other end, or even the whole cable, right, or the two uh, extremities are broken. It's not functioning properly. So that could also mean your computer will not turn on. Number three, which is very common, is the bit that plugs onto the motherboard has been plugged into the wrong 
pins. It could have been plugged into a power LED pin or a hard drive LED pin instead. And it doesn't matter how many times you're gonna press, nothing's gonna happen, it's not gonna turn on. And number four, which is a bit more difficult to diagnose, is the actual pins on the motherboard themselves are broken. So those are the four main reasons why your computer may not turn on, although you may have power from the back and you can see evidence with an LED light, for example, on the motherboard itself, if you have an LED light. We're not here talking about what if the motherboard is dead. This is a video for a different episode coming up in the series. So how do you test for this though? Uh, it's quite simple and there are two ways to do this. The first thing you need to do is you need to open the front panel and have a look. And on this uh, type of you know, cheap end models, there are tabs inside which you need to press and uh, hopefully the front panel will come off. The lower end models are quite difficult to do, right? The higher end models you could literally just kind of grab from the bottom and pull out, okay? So I'm just gonna pull that to show you. All right, so these bits are coming off. Um, this is the cable which is similar to this one okay and uh, it plugs to the other end of the motherboard and I'll show you on the motherboard where it plugs in and you have here something called PWRSW it's the power switch I'm actually using a different cable it's written on the reset SW for the reset switch it doesn't matter because this works the same way. It's just that if it was in a computer, this would, this would be plugged in the reset button instead of the power button, right? So do bear that in mind. Also, the orientation of this doesn't matter. You could plug in positive to negative or negative to positive, it will still work. So we'll just do that. Now, you can buy these cables off eBay or Amazon. You can also DIY one, you would need soldering kit to be able to plug this in uh, which probably most of you won't want to do that one way of getting this for cheap would be to go to a second hand store and usually you'll find some older desktops and you could salvage some parts I actually got this one from an old desktop which was dead anyway so it's quite handy to keep these right so the way to do this now what you need to do to eliminate the possibility of the front switch and oop, the cable being a problem you're going to get a different cable plug it in you're going to turn the power switch on and uh, already we can see there's LED light here so which is good news and then you're just going to press the switch and there you go so we have movement in our you know uh, fan spinning and uh, hopefully if everything is okay you should see something on the screen yeah there you go so if previously um, you were pressing the button in the front and nothing was happening, but you took it out and you did this test, that just means that the power button in the front or the cable is broken, problem solved, right? All you need to do is buy one and replace that. Now, don't worry about this, uh, it says CMOS setting wrong, this is to do with the battery, this is a different story. We're not trying to boot up at the moment, we're just trying to test for whether we can turn the computer on. Okay, I'm gonna switch that off. Um, a second way you could actually turn this on if you don't have a cable is you do what's called shorting you're going to need something like a screwdriver a conductive metallic part on one end and hopefully please remember a non-conductive uh, part on the other end because you're going to need to create a bridge between the two pins on the board essentially we call that shorting and that should turn it on okay so watch so you're going to locate the uh, two pins which says PWRSW stands for power switch and uh, again, I'm going to turn it back on from the back power supply. And then I'm just going to touch these two. And there you go. It's turned on once again. And that is a way to be able to do this. Okay. So again, that will tell you that the front button or the cable was a problem. Right. Bear in mind, this is quite difficult to do if this motherboard is inside the case. As you can tell here, this is just here for demonstration. I've actually breadboarded. This is what we call it when you take out the motherboard. It's called breadboarding, separating. I've connected only the uh, graphics card, uh, the power supply, and uh, the monitor, mouse, and keyboard. And there's nothing else. There's not even a disk drive on this. We're just trying to check whether it turns on or not. I'm not trying to boot up right now. Okay, so. Please, if you do need to do this, um, you can do this inside a case. A bit difficult, especially for smaller case. Space is very tight. 
So I would advise taking this out, okay? Now let's talk about scenario number two, which means you turn the switch on from the back, there is power coming in, you press the power button and it boots up. You see fans spinning, you see some LED lights, but it stops after a few seconds and then maybe it would restart again, whatever it does. Now that, yes, could indicate a problem with the power supply or the motherboard, but we'll talk about this in another video. But for now, can the case cause the problem? Yes, it can. Now, if you have a small debris, like a metallic debris, inside the case stuck somewhere, it can also be something like a screw. What that's gonna do is, if you remember, I talked about in my last video, that the in the post, when the processor is trying to initialize and it's looking for things, it's also looking for the right voltage, and if that debris or screw is somewhere causing a short, then it will not boot up because it will deem the computer not to be safe. It's trying to self-protect. So it may just keep restarting or it may just switch off, right? Again, how are you going to know this? Well, not easily known unless you take the motherboard out again because you need to find out if there is a screw somewhere stuck, okay? And another scenario where you could be stuck in a start loop because of the case would be, and if you remember in my last video, again, I talk about standoffs at the bottom of the case and uh, those could have been wrongly put and somehow the motherboard and the standoff and the case is having the wrong contact. It's happened to me before, especially when you migrate a computer uh, component from one case to another. So there is a short being caused because it's wrongly grounded. Yeah, there is contact between the motherboard and the case. Again, you're gonna have to take the motherboard out to test for that. There's no other way of telling. To give you a very practical example, um, in one video I did check the link up there, we had a USB device over current status detected problem, which was causing the computer not to boot up properly. It was stuck on this message. And in that video, we found out that the front USB was damaged and that was plugged onto the motherboard and that was causing the computer not to boot up properly. So all we did was we unplugged the uh, damaged USB port and uh, the problem was fixed. Although technically it doesn't really come part of a computer case, but rather it's a secondary device like a USB port, but it was preventing the computer to boot up. So a different troubleshooting could also mean that when you do unplug everything from a case, you start to plug one thing at a time, the essential stuff, and, and you restart every time until you find what's causing your computer not to boot up. So there you have it, some scenarios where your case could be responsible for your computer not turning on or not booting up properly. I do understand it might be difficult for some of you to take the motherboard out, but it is necessary if the other troubleshooting we'll talk about is going to fail. There are of course much more advanced techniques we could use to troubleshoot uh, this computer. For example, you could use a digital multimeter and test for continuity, especially on the board and especially between the points of the front panel and the motherboard, etc. But it's not for the audience that I know. Unless I'm wrong, you guys tell me. And if you're interested, maybe after this series, we're going to do a more advanced troubleshooting series. Guys, I actually do want to finish this series on the desktop and then start one similar, but for a laptop situation, which should be a bit more difficult to troubleshoot. And then there will be a lot more other series that I want to do. So hopefully you'll tag along for the journey. So there we have it. Uh, make sure you let me know in the comments below if you want to see anything more specific. I do want to finish this series and please check out the first introduction video and the other one if you don't know how to take a motherboard out of a case. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified and if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback, so it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this video and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.